Now we begin the second book of Samuel from chapter 1. We're going to look at three insights from this particular chapter. My name is Bumi Tokong. Firstly, we're going to consider the chapter summary, then the key verse that I want us to explore in this particular chapter, and then we would consider how we could apply that verse into our lives in the life application section. So let's get going. Chapter summary. An Amalekite enters the picture and he discloses the fact that he actually killed Saul, although he was lying, because we know from chapter 31 of 1 Samuel, we know that Saul actually killed himself and his armor bearer also killed himself. The Amalekite comes to David with the hope of gaining some form of credibility and honor from David by claiming he has rescued the kingdom from the hands of Saul and passed it over to David. And David would not let any man take that glory because that glory ought to go to God. David, knowing that this Amalekite has obviously lied, says to him that his confession has led to his death. So he asked one of the young men to fall on him and kill him. And this was done very swiftly. David then went on to compose a song for Saul and his three sons. And it's an amazing kind of song that David composed and made Israel learn it and recite it. So let's go to the key verse now. The key verse for me in this chapter is from verses 23 to 27. And it says, and I read, Saul and Jonathan, in life they were loved and admired, and in death they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Daughters of Zion, weep for Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and finery, who adorned your garments with ornaments of gold. How the mighty have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies slain on the heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of women. How the mighty have fallen. The weapons of war have perished. In an effort to come to the key verse that I really wanted, which is verse 26, I had to read verses 23 to 27. Because here we find David painting the picture of Saul as though he was actually Saul's friend or Saul's admirer. But we all know that Saul tried to kill David many times. And even Saul was so mean that he tried to kill his own son, Jonathan. So my question, I ask a question here, you know, is this how we talk about our enemies? Do we, do we uh, speak of our enemies as though they were really nice people? Or do we condemn them when they're in trouble. See how David commends the life of Saul as though Saul really did everything right. But you and I know that he didn't. But that's just David's way of living. But I want to come to a verse here that um, a lot of people take into a disputed area by saying that perhaps David and Jonathan's relationship was a homosexual relationship. I don't know if you've heard that, but I've actually heard someone tell me that before. And far be it from that. That's, this is not an homosexual relationship at all. This is a relationship of two men who were willing to exchange their life for each other if they had to. David could say, your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of women, because Jonathan had to put his life on the line for David on many occasions. Remember that the reason why Saul, his father, tried to kill Jonathan was because Jonathan tried to defend David. At that occasion, Jonathan had to lay down his life for David, his friend. And none of his wives was ever in that position where they had to lay down their life for his. But Jonathan was. Hence, the part of his song where he says, Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that. Of women. Remember also that Jonathan knew exactly where David was when his father was looking for him, but Jonathan refused to give David up. So because of that, David could make this statement. Here's the life application. True love is laying down your life for others. Are you laying down your life for other people? You know, in the book of Philippians, Saul admonishes us as believers and he says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. 
Each of you should not look only at your own interest, but also the interests of others. So that's the question. Jesus talks about this in John 15, where he say that I lay down my life for the sheep. And again, then goes on to say, I lay down my life and I pick it up. No one takes it from me, but I lay down myself. In essence, Jesus was showing us an example of true sacrifice. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the Bible tells us concerning finances, it says, You know the grace that was upon our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus gave himself for us and we are told to give ourselves for other people as well. Are you giving yourself for others or are you living life for just yourself? Are your goals about helping other people or are your goals about just what you want, you, your two dogs, and your children? Or are you looking beyond your immediate family? Are you looking at the family of God? Are you looking at God's people and how you can help God's children? That's the question for you today. That's the application of this scripture into our lives today. If you like this video, like it. If you like it, share it. Subscribe to my channel. Write a question or comment or feedback below. If you have a private message, then email me to admin at bumitokoministries.org. God bless you.